everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the Daily Critique. We're going to step outside of the line or queue of question-based critiques today and return to a standard daily critique. The image was created by John, who's a beginning photographer from Illinois. Metadata that we have is Canon A1 camera and 100 speed act for color slide film. In his backstory, John says that he took this image in his basement. He arranged some light bright glowing letters and numbers and then also lit them with a very strong side light. You can see the side light coming in from the left in the image. First thing that I want to talk about when I talk about things that I like in this image really has to do with process and then I'll talk about the idea of elements and principles of design. It's clear that for John to make this image he starts with sort of a blank slate in the background. He has these pieces and parts and he becomes playful. I mean this makes you think of building blocks, Legos, all kinds of things that you might have done when you were a kid of just kind of working with things in your environment that you like to make something new. And one of the things that I have learned uh, teaching my Creativity Next Step workshop in Savannah, Georgia for the last five years, the Next Step workshop is that as adults there are a lot of things that we resist connected to becoming more creative and one of the things that we can resist is the idea of play and almost anybody that's going to help you to be more creative will encourage you to introduce play and scenarios where new things can happen where you can have a new experience where there can be the random we put so much value as adults on ideas like expertise, like knowledge, like competency, like efficiency and production, and all of those can add up to be an enormous block to creativity. So looking at John's image today, I really want to encourage you to think about when is the last time that you gave yourself permission, first of all, to just play? When is the last time that you gave yourself permission in the service of your photography to be in a scenario where you didn't know what was going to happen, where you were pretty sure something new was going to happen you've never experienced before? Uh, very, very important part of the creative process if you want to move ahead and become more creative. One of the hallmarks of creative people is being able to do something that's actually really difficult and we have to work on it to be able to do it. There's straddling two worlds. One that we practice a lot, being efficient, being productive, making decisions, getting from here to there, being uh, not, not completely, I don't want to make this a left brain versus right brain thing. We're all whole brain, but it is a modality that is very linear. And we can practice that a lot and not practice so much putting ourselves in a space where we're letting go of that type of linear knowledge and control put ourselves in a random situation so we could be inspired on that level. Another thing that's very inspiring to me about this image is just the reminder of the power of archetype. When I looked at this image at first, the light is glowing and that's really beautiful. Very exciting light, very exciting colors. Red's one of my favorite colors is playing in a very powerful way here. But then just the idea of all these sort of characters in the story are definite archetypes. They're letters and symbols. Our brain is constantly looking for order and for me, one of the things that I did was I thought, well, maybe there is some order to this. I see the number two. I see two M's. I see two X's. I see two B's. Is John telling me that there are two of all the pairs of letters? But no, that broke down at some point. But doing that work made me move a lot further into the image that I may have otherwise. And this image uh, can inspire us in another way. It can just remind us of the power of archetypes, either suggested when we suggest things that are universal or it becomes more literal and boy uh, do suggestions or literal inclusion of text numbers letters have potentially huge effect on how the viewer sees our image I've already mentioned exciting color so the last thing that I want to talk about in today's critique is how this image might really remind us of the power of the design principle of proportion if we're working traditionally one of the things that we can do if we want to push towards more order and more simplicity is we can have a little bit of a very high value idea like red and then a lot in the composition of a lower value idea that's let's say like a muted green reds complement okay and that can be a traditional way to work right now what's happening is there's quite a bit of this very high value red and it's in a lot of different places in the image is sort of spread out through the image that means that I'm getting pulled in a lot of different directions here. If we were to just, uh, let me just copy the background because that's good workflow if we're going to work on this in Photoshop to make all the edits available. We can just quickly change the color relationships in this image by going to hue saturation. And if I want to go in the opposite direction, 
there's just a little bit of red's opposite if we're talking about the color wheel that we're dealing with inside of Photoshop, where red and cyan are opposites. There's just a little bit of red's opposite cyan. If I pull this slider all the way to the left, and I'm going to create the color opposite there, and I will move all the way to the point where that cyan becomes the red, and everything else is much cooler now. And we've reversed the proportion to make it more traditional. Before, we have a lot of high value and less of lower value. Now we have just a little bit of a high value idea when it comes to color and a lot of lower value. And it simplifies the structure and how we look at the image and how we move around. I'm not in any way saying that it is better. In a lot of respects, I don't like this as much because overall the color doesn't give me near as exciting of a feeling as this. Maybe something in between. Just really trying to say that today's image gives us a powerful opportunity to see what an effect the design principle of proportion can have on the way that the viewer perceives the image, the way that the image uh, feels in terms of knowing where to go, the ideas of simplicity and balance, so on and so forth. This would be a really fun image to do all kinds of things in terms of changing hues and maybe have a whole series of images where you're just playing around with color shifting on this particular arrangement in this landscape. A lot of things to really enjoy about John's image. Love the playful nature of it. One of my favorite things about it. I want to say a big thank you to John for sharing it with us. I want to say a big thank you to you for being here. Hope to see you again real soon on the Mindful Eye.